All right, guys, we are back and at it once again. This time we got ourselves arrogant Nephilim versus versus four plus one. Need to fix these scores. Production value, baby. Takes effort. We're going to be taking you to a special, special place. We're taking you to land of of the Sky Temple. If you haven't seen Sky Temple, I believe, at all so far during this, this casting season. And Arrogant might might be contender for best uh, best logo in all of NGS. Like, mm, that's pretty pretty tight, I gotta say. Now. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Let's get on into the draft because we got these two teams here. They started off things already. Sorry for the slight delay. Finishing up that interview, getting everyone in, in always takes a little bit of time. So, uh, Sky Temple. We got Hanzo immediately coming on out here. We got Stukov and Sonia following on up. A Diablo Ban and a Phoenix Ban. Uh, now, this is this is one, two, three, baby. I like this. Arrogant Nephilim really knows what they want. I like the Hanzo. I like the Mouth Tracer. And they lost out on the Stukov, but that's fine. They're like, we're going to take Mouth and Tracer. Like, they're a super powerful combo. Get Tracer into the back, onto the Stukov, bully him down. Finally, bam, dead Stukov. <laughs> Now, now who else can you choose here? And who can you ban here? You, you, they have everything other than a tank and a solo laner. So you need to decide which tank or which solo laner you do not want to face is Sonya. There's Blaze, there's Leo, there is Mouth Ale. Now, this does tell you they are going to play a solo warrior. Um, I'm sorry, they're not going to play solo warrior. Uh, but if they played Mouth Ale, which is most likely not going to happen, then they're probably playing Blaze or Leo. So you opt for who you don't want to see, which is usually Blaze. Usually. Now, Leo is actually pretty good against their comp so far in that Sonya and Stukov don't have the tools necessarily to get out until much later. Uh, flailing Swipe and a Stiff Arm to prevent the Entomb from happening. Now, the Garage Pan is really good. I really like... I really like Ban from this side of 4 plus 1. That's because he's a pretty potent tank. And the Varian ban is also actually rather nice. They've taken out the Diablo and the Varian. Two of the biggest counters for Tracer. So they, they knew going in here that they wanted to get Tracer. And by not picking up the Varian, and because they're in the second ban phase, they basically put themselves in a better position right now on the side of Arrogant Nephilim. By being first pick, they've, they've gotten themselves a really good advantage. I don't see teams doing this too much where they... They actually know <clears throat> one what they want to draft and two how to execute it in the draft. And they executed this perfectly because they saw no tank picked up on the side of four plus one. So four plus one can't pick up a tank because you're now in the second round of banning. Oh, we already picked Tracer. Hmm. Now we get to go and guess what? We get to go and get no variant here either. So like good luck locking locking down the tracer. So the gray main and Johanna. I like the gray main here because at this point they have yet to show CC side of arrogant Nephilim. And Johanna with Gray Main will allow well Johanna will, will reduce the damage tracer can put out which means more free damage on the side of Grambane into Tracer in the trades. The Sonya will be the solo lane, obviously, so I'm pretty certain we'll see a Blaze here. We can see a Muradin here. 
you could see even in Arthas here, the blaze in Arthas. <coughs> and we're going to see the ETC. So the ETC is an interesting choice because he has no real capability to mosh in this team comp versus 4 plus 1. On the other hand, 4 plus 1 has... Well, they, they have all the interrupts, all the tools they need there. But ETC can go stage dive. Stage dive is still a potent tool. It's it's a tool that allows ETC to play split and blaze. Basically what you do is you have blaze until 10, play as the solo laner. 10 and after you have ETC play as the solo laner. And then ETC stage dives in for any fights that should break out. And if they're not matching ETC in lane, then they're losing XP and or they're getting structures taken from them, slowly but surely. So I really like what Arrogant Nephilim has done. I, I Like I said, they've come in with such a good control of this draft that I'm not sure these guys should be in Division Division C. I think these guys are kind of sandbagging it uh, because that's kind of scary. <clears throat> now, I don't know about the Kel'thas pick. Um, I'm going to say it right now, like the Kel'thas pick makes no sense to me. Because Tracer is going to dance around Kel'thas. Kel'thas is a squishy target that Tracer kills really easily. Because he can drop the bomb on her, but he can't land the combo usually on her. If he can't land the combo on her, well, she just basically pokes him down for free. So we're, we're now loading up onto this match. I'm giving, I'm giving the keys to the, the temple to Arrogant Nephilim. Let's actually take a look at the standings between these two teams. See what we might be able to expect here. Arrogant Nephilim has gone two, three, and one. So two wins, three draws, one loss. So Arrogant Nephilim is actually looking very strong. They're in the top. Uh, they're, they are number six. And two, three, four, five, and six are very close. We're talking 13 points at two. 11, 10, 10, and 9. So a domination victory here catapults them to number 3. 4 plus 1, on the other hand, are 0, 1, and 5. But don't let your dreams just be memes. Because, <clears throat> well, we just saw Dreaming Weenies take a win from Pork Slot. Not just a win, but two wins. <coughs> And they had yet to even get a single win all season so far. So, 4 plus 1 is still in it to win it. So, let's introduce these two teams. Yeah, no pointer on the Malfurion. The kill it in on the Chaser. We got Trabe on the Hanzo. Sigatai on the ETC. And Kime or Kaim. I uh, can't tell because uh learning Japanese and I could easily be Kime on the blaze and that'll be arrogant nephilim and on the opposing side we got true bite on the johanna riven on the grammy cancer fish on the kelthos we got geek 72 on the sonia and finally we got big smoke 305 on the stew cup there comes the combo <laughs> onto to kill it in but a single malfurion Heal. It does it all. That's all Tracer needs. Oh, oh, production value, production value. Sorry, we didn't flip into the game. Ah. Uh, okay, it's only level one. And didn't miss anything too exciting there. Except my team introduction. So, nice light coming out from Segatai. He does have the bomb on him. He, the bomb does spread onto Null Pointer. Not too big a deal. Recall coming out from to kill it in. Mid lane is uh, pretty even because they do have the mouth to heal him up. In the bot lane, however, he may time. Uh, hopefully, one of the two. Hopefully, it's not something crazy. We'll, we'll go with Kime for now. Um, he has held this lane. Sonya in the top, dealing with the Hanzo. Um, <coughs> Hanzo has redemption, so this is okay. There's the Tracer. He's not going to be able to do anything much there. Blinked on back with uh, that recall. We got the Pulse Strike. We got Adrenaline Stamp Pack. Nature Swiftness. And finally, Prog Rock. On the other side, we got the Tough as Nails. The Perfect Aim. Laws of Hope. Mana Addict. 
and a growing infestation. I'm glad he actually took Mana Attic because I see so many people take it and not actually, or sorry, take Infection and never complete it. Uh, the Perfect Aim is interesting. I'm not actually a fan of it against this team necessarily. Well, and let me take that back. Against all the CC now that he has to face the root, the slide, and knockback, and another sound from Blaze, Graymane can't actually commit to fights. And this is where I always feel like Graymane feels like half a hero. He'll, he'll be having to play ranged most of it. Okay, we got Kime. Kime is indeed. Um, <coughs> so... Top lane, Geek72, going on down a little bit, nothing too much. He does have that battle rage, 10% HP, 22 charges, and first temples will be activating on here. We also have the explosive arrows, redemption almost done. Looking across, there's a slide onto Stukov. There's the bomb, big smoke, going to survive. Segatai is actually taking a bunch of damage there out of it. So, mid towers, we got Johanna on the point. True Bite just dishing it out. She should not have the bomb available. Um, it's only at 15% right now. And there is a stun coming on out onto Riven. Riven is going to have to back on off to kill it in, is poking him down. There's the recall back into position. Nicely done. Really good tracer play coming out. So now, True Bite trying to get back in, contesting this. There's a stun from Kime. Three man stun. They've now pushed him off. There's the root. Johanna. Riven trying to trade on out with the Killadin. Doing pretty well, actually. And they will regain control of the midpoint on the side of Arrogant Nephilim. On the top lane, however, we have Hanzo just sitting on up here. He needs to rotate down. Like, Soken is okay, but like, just come on down. Win this lane su super hard. Uh, this temple super hard. And get the lane in the midpoint, too. Okay, so he's now come on down. We have. Fours and sevens about to come on up. Uh, Dekelin in on Stukov. He has nowhere to go. Kimei trying to get on in. Doesn't land the stun. He will back on out. So, we got Temples done. Segatai coming on in. Sliding onto Cancerfish. Cancerfish has nowhere to run. There's a the follow-up stun. There's the bomb. Say goodbye. Because Cancerfish, you've been, uh, you've gotten in chemotherapy. So, <clears throat> the map's pretty even. We have the front wall down. Got front wall down. Sonya is, is still beating Trave up here as, as to be expected. Uh, but he does have the explosive arrow at this point, which really helps. But Geek72 missing the critical stun on to kill it in. There's the root. I don't think he's going to be able to kill him. Okay. No bomb up. If he had the bomb up, they would have actually secured the kill on Sonya, which would have been really nice as... You can see Trey has to fall back. HP, uh, there's the mana. So he's back in action. And this was a really nice deal between Kibe and Segatai. I didn't even point this out while that was happening up top with that gank. Arrogant Nephilim picking up the siege on their side, both camps, and they really had themselves a nice advantage now. A no no siege to pressure against them. True by taking a lot of damage here. Having to pipe the iron skin, going to come back in, capturing himself too with it, but he's actually just helping uh, the Killadin stack that DPS numbers. Now, Sony's still pushed all the way up because she has tough as nails here. Han Hanzo is not going to be doing as much because, well, his attack is on the slower side. Redemption kind of helps counter that if. He actually completes it. It'll help counter that. I mean, it's a, a quest that resets on death. So as long as Trey holds it, he'll be okay. <clears throat> the one downside is that he doesn't have serrated arrows. And so their boss control is significantly worse right now without it. We have the, is that a health pack actually coming out, which is interesting. There's the invade coming on out for four plus one. The beautiful silence and Blaze is not going to be getting on it. He just manages to jet propulsion on out. But in the backside, we have a little thing called Tracer as she confirms a kill. Big smoke. There's the recall. And to kill it in, we'll still be in a good position. Getting the kill. Coming on in. Riven is next up on the list. And three kills for the side of Arrogant Nephilim. And you can definitely say... Four plus one were some arrogant Nephilim at that point. Whew. 
Now. To kill it in, making the plays. And he does have bullet time. He has the health pack. So even though he gets low, he heals up pretty quickly. Between him and Mouth, or be, sorry, between that and Mouth, he'll be able to heal really, really well. So top lane, we got Cancerfish up here. Tens were hit. We had all the normal suspects. We do have the stage dive. We have the Twilight Dream coming on out. Um, the Twilight Dream is interesting because they don't really have too much dive here. There's a son from Kime. There's the follow-up Rue, Zukov. But there's the silence. Twilight Dream. Say goodbye to Sonya. Going a little too far, a little too deep. Dragon Arrow follow-up. Riven next up on the hit list for to kill it in. And doing as his name says, he's to killing him. And Big Smoke will be next up. Three members down. Four, and that is going to be one dead four plus one and you can definitely say one is nowhere to be seen right now we got front wall going down cancer fish has to just stay and finish this at this point um well i guess this will complete it and they've lost the front wall arrogant nephilim is just running away with this game at this point i mean 13 11 they still have Bunker. Well, Bunker's always up, so <laughs> you don't even need to assume if it's up. It's always up. Uh, Dragon Owl will be off cooldown soon. Stage Dive will be up. Twilight Dream up. And in another 30 seconds, we already have the bomb ready from to kill it in. And they will be rotating up, getting that vision. Now they can just stick together as a 5-man if they so choose. Because they don't really need to soak those lanes. Uh, they can have ETC deal with it. He does have um, Echo Pedal, so he'll be able to sit up there, get the waves clear, and stage dive into the fight as needed, like I previously, previously said during draft. Now, taking a look, uh, yeah, we have the Adhesive Petroleum. We have the Incinerator Gauntlet. We actually might have an evade. There's the invade coming on out. To kill it and looking to get on in. We do have ETC up here. He can easily invade, but they don't have blaze. So they're going to just poke and look to back on out. ETC should stay on up here because he can stage dive onto the bottom. And this is where Hergen Nephilim, if they see enough people top, they can take the boss. If they see enough people, you want to take the boss because it's safe. And... At this point, they are all rotating out because the bottom is where 4 plus 1 needs to be to prevent that very thing from happening. You see one person up here, you can take the boss. Literally, that's all you need. Kime stopping Geek 72. Geek 72 not landing the stun. There comes True Bite into the back. There's the silence onto Tracer. Not going to be good enough. There's a Chariot and Tracer's back in the fray. There's the silence. They're looking for her, but they are not going to be able to get her. Geek 72 pulling on out. To kill it in will be going down as Riven has himself some dinner and noms on the booty of Tracer. There's a follow-up. Trape is going to be going down. The bunker is going to be not for long and no pointer. Had an exception there, baby, because you've been erased from the game. But in the meantime, ETC's been up here getting this. Now, I don't know if I agree with this play of letting Segatai actually stay up here and not calling him in for the team fight because they just lost four members. Oof. That team fight definitely hurt the soul because they, they had the advantage. They had... You see gems pushing on in. Now they have to deal with this night camp pushing on in and taking a look at the rest of the talents. Uh, we still have no 13 picked up from Sonya. We have the running wild. Go for the throat. Incendiary elixir has yet to get a single stack. That's not looking good. Uh, we got the conviction, the blessed momentum, blessed shield, holy fury, the vision bomb. We going, we going bombing, baby. Uh, we also have the sun king's fury there. We have the typical. Uh, Lurking arm build. We don't have it fully with the root. We have the the lingering spines instead. 16s have now been hit up, hit by the side of arrogant nephilim. We got the giant slayer. I'm not actually feeling this at all because of the lack of never out outmatched uh, and no level one to go with it. So I'm not feeling the giant giant, uh, giant slayer. Piercing arrows would have been better in my opinion there. Uh, we also have the locked and loaded. Bullet spray. 
<clears throat> and we have Blaze, who has just uh, been burnt to a crisp on his internet. In the meantime, we got the heat treatment, we got the fuel leak, and we got the ice block and nature's balance. We also have Mike Check, finally imposing presence. Um, I'm actually, I, I'm not a fan of the imposing presence too much. It's okay. I prefer to take uh, aggressive shredding, especially if you have prog rock completed because you can you can actually heal people significantly more uh, and keep the time in check so that we know what, how long they have before they have to continue on the match. We have the no escape coming out from Sonya instead of the mystical spear, and which is an interesting choice. So let's discuss what's happening in this game right now. We had the boss picked up. We have Blaze AFK'd because of the DC. We have the Siege being picked up. They can pressure bottom as a team with 16. Uh, they don't have their Bruiser Camp up for a while. Enemy team has their Bruiser Camp. They could make the risky play or maybe not so risky if you pay attention to what's on the map. Uh, Bruiser Camp pick up. Because they are getting the front wall, that that front wall might fall down. And next temple phase will be in the top, which will then start focusing on, which will then start focusing on these towers, which have already sustained damage. And we are back at it as we now have our blaze back in the fray. So we got the siege coming on up. Uh, and let's see. So bruisers have now been picked up. That boss was cleared out. Did relatively nothing, it appears. But it's off the map, which is good. And now they're going to pressure top as five and clear up this night camp top is like i said you have blaze now as your main tank really with the team you have etc stage dive into the fights and once he's into the fight that's when you know it really begins so i like the positioning on this side of four plus one they only need sonia is probably their best bet they need to put big smoke further back He's in a, a bit of a bad position. True Bite needs to be sitting where Big Smoke is. Riven should be sitting over there. And now they're spotted out and not much they can do. So there is Kimei sitting in the bush. The wave's pushed on in. They'll keep vision. Sonya has now popped the Wrath to kill it in, looking for someone. There's a blind. She gets trapped in the corner, but will be able to get out. There's the stage of time. ETC in no man's land, taking the damage, getting chunked on down. Riven look for the kill. Dragon's Arrow has come on out. Trave has been chunked on down. Kimei in the fray. There's the stun. One man stun to kill it in has now been hit. The recall comes on out. A three man root and they're looking for kills potentially. Geek72 getting chunked now. Segatai, this is why you went aggressive shredding. Because aggressive shredding, you'd be healing your team up. We got Geek72 back on the point, trying to get the value out of it. Riven getting focused on down from to kill it in. We got Cancerfish, Big Smoke, and True Bite coming on in to try and peel. Geek72 coming on in. Kimei taking damage. There's the Whirlwind. There they go. Back in on off. But Riven. Riven now getting stuff from Kimei. And Kimei will be securing that kill. Geek72, say goodbye. No, Geek72. To kill it in, secures that kill. And we have a, just a rough fight for both teams as the damage is spreading across. But they manage to stay in the fray and secure themselves the rest of this temple. So, ETC, oh, ETC, you almost spotted him. He doesn't go in, doesn't see them, doesn't step into the bush, and that's, My temple's power. And that's what you want to keep in mind, that if you're, if you're a tank player and you're up, check the bush, and you also didn't need five people sitting up there which technically was four you want sega tide to come on in you want to come on in with the rest of the team uh kimi taking a lot of damage there there's the kill it in now going to come drop the damage ensure that he doesn't continue to aggress kimi and blaze will walk on out so 
<clears throat> this is this is coaching time. If you have four people or five people up here, leave one person on here, let the four come on in and check. Because they could have they could have fought him four v three and one. So who do you leave up there? You leave the blaze up there because he's not your main tank and you have ETC. Or you could leave the ETC up there and you leave the blaze. So either one is the way to go in my opinion. So they pick up another, they try to pick up the camp. They back on out 19 versus 18. So Arrogant FLM just really needs to play for 20 at this point. They're full level ahead. So this is pretty much the, the slowest part of the game. This is basically no objective for quite a while. There'll be two temples. Uh, <clears throat> once 20 is hit, so we got 30 seconds before temples are hit. Neither team will hit 20. So this is where four plus one needs to ensure they can get a kill. If they can get a kill here, they can get themselves back in the game because they'll get themselves the XP needed to even things up. So how are they going to split? ETC is going to be sitting in the mid lane, soaking it up. Uh, or is he rotating top? He's getting vision. Wait, this is very dangerous. He has no one with him on his team. He could stage dive up, but they have a blessed shield. Oh, uh, let's see if he tries. There's a stun. They now have more. They do have the silence. He's going nowhere. Oh, there's the pullback from Johanna. Uh, why? I don't know why the rest of the team wasn't there. They just let him go. I think with Geek and Riven, they would have killed him. Um... They lose the bottom four, they secure themselves no kill, and they're now down an entire level and a talent advantage. A decently chunked one. So level 20s have been hit. Second in a pretty nice position. They're watching the boss. They're finishing up bot. They're seeing where they're going. And uh, they can start the boss as soon as they see where they are. Or are they going to fight for the mid? Fighting for mid is okay. I would just take the boss. Because... Sonya will stay there. They won't come and collapse on you. They lose the top in the meantime, too. So they're down two keeps in this game. They are close to hitting 20, but they're going to be playing from very far behind. And they're about to lose the boss. So what do we have here? At 20, we are 16. We have the Twin Spheres. Uh, so the double double bombs so he can actually sorry triple bomb you uh dw 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 and 20s have been hit we got the play of the game we have the total recall total recall coming on out interesting uh burn notice life bloom and death metal here so i don't know if they'll be able to stop this boss there's a stun there's a stage dive onto the back line riven and cancerfish getting caught in between a rock and uh etc there is the Pyroblast? Pyroblast doing absolutely nothing. Getting interrupted there. Redemption back online. Bunker coming on out. Boss is working on the core. Say goodbye to True Bite. And the core is going to be melting at this point. There's no three man stun coming out from Kimei. But that's all she wrote. As core just needs a single person. And that is the boss to finish it off. Very well played on the side of Arrogant Nephilim. A few mistakes here and there. And a lot more on four plus one. So game one going on to the side of Arrogant. And we'll be back with game number two very shortly. So sit on tight while I get that ready. But before that, let's take a quick look at the stats. Um, if I get the game results, there we go. Damage, Tracer 43k, Hanzo 41k, Blaze 34k. Answerfish 30k, 22. I mean like the DPS numbers basically tell the story top three dps all on the same team closest damage is entirely 10k behind not enough damage from the sonia not enough damage from riven um it's actually very bad like in general this and these dps numbers from their sonia and from uh, their their gray main i mean we had johanna dishing out as much damage as sonia and she has a whole noodle to be honest uh so yeah let's let's get on to game number two so sit on tight i have a few replays from that game i believe so let me just 